of all, thank you, John, and good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Isabella Marinelli, and um, I'm here to walk you through a brief overview of the science uh, in our project, which is, as John said, about beta cells and the benefits of the diverse workforce. It's a team project, so we are a team here, a picture of us. And we are a researcher from University of Birmingham, University of Exeter, and we are collaborating with Carol, our artist, who's going to present her piece of art in, um, in a few minutes. Next slide, please. Let me start talking about diabetes. So diabetes is a metabolic disease and occurs when your body cannot keep the level of glucose, which is the sugar, within a normal range. So the high concentration of glucose in the blood may cause severe damage to other organs in the, uh, during the time. So diabetes has a huge impact on the society and economy. The WHO estimates that there are 422 million of adults with diabetes all around the world, which is incredibly high. It's one person in 11. So how does the body usually keep the glucose in check within the normal range? Well, it does by secreting the insulin, which is a hormone and it makes the cell in your body uptake and store the glucose. And in this way, it lowers the concentration in the blood. It's produced in the pancreas, which is an organ that we have behind the stomach. And of course, the concentration of um, the amount of insulin, which is released by the pancreas, depends on the concentration of glucose in the blood. So if you have a huge piece of cake, for instance, the glucose in your blood is a very high level. So the pancreas has to release a lot of insulin to make, uh, to compensate it. While in the early morning, when you just woke up and you haven't eaten anything during the night, the concentration of glucose in the blood, it's, a, it's pretty low. So the pancreas has to release a very small amount of insulin. Among the type of diabetes, uh, we focus on type 2 diabetes in our project. Now, type 2 diabetes is when the insulin is not produced enough or is not working properly. Next slide, please. So let me introduce you to Ina. She's a, a lovely grandma. She has type 2 diabetes. Uh, she's been on medication for quite some time, but she starts thinking maybe her medication are not working as well as they used to because she's always feeling thirsty and tired uh, once again. And those are very common symptoms of diabetes. So her condition uh, is not unique. There are several people with diabetes experiencing the same. So scientists are looking for new targets for drug therapy. But you may understand that to do that, we have to go to the very heart of the problem and learn more about those cells responsible for producing and releasing insulin. Well, those cells that you find in the pancreas are the pancreatic beta cells. And they're very important because they are the only producing and releasing cell, sorry, insulin producing and releasing cell in the body. And here we see a video, these yellow dots are the beta cells and they are pulsating and they are releasing insulin. Now, the beta cells are a very nice bunch of cells because they may be slightly different, but they work together to release the right amount of insulin for that specific concentration of glucose. So you may think of them as a choir. In a choir, you have different people with different voices, but they all work together to produce music. Well, in the case of beta cells, that would be insulin and music, of course. Well, recently has been observed that when beta cells are looking too alike, so when there is loss of diversity, you may end up developing type 2 diabetes. So in other words, it seems that when they are too alike, they, they become too alike, they stop being as efficient as they were at responding to the change of glucose in the blood. So if we go back to the choir analogy, imagine a choir with just one person, so one voice repeated. The music is boring, it's not as enjoyable as it was before. Well, something similar, I'd say, is happening with the beta cells. So in our project, we want to check if diversity is actually bringing any benefits. So if it's actually needed by the beta cells to work properly. And we do that using our mathematics. 
So we use our, mathemat our mathematical model to simulate something, uh, where, to simulate a bunch of beta cells that look all alike, like the choir on the right, and a situation where the beta cells are light, uh, slightly different, so like the choir on the left, and we investigate the effect it would have. You can understand the advantage of using a mathematical model to do that, which a mathematical model requires just a laptop, instead of having to perform experiment on humans and animal experiment that can be expensive, sometimes not even possible or, 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 or not practical. So I'll walk you through the science and the health in our project, and I'll let Carl speak about the art. So. The Carol. Thanks, Isabella. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, we spent some some time at the research incubator. Um, um, what struck at me was kind of what Isabella was saying there about the choir analogy. I, I presume they're probably using that analogy because I didn't know what was going on. They were trying to explain to me how everything worked. But um, I really liked the idea, or I was really drawn to the idea that there was that they were working with oscillations, I guess. And um, I just hadn't known that before. Um, and also we kind of talked a bit about how, we, we kind of talked about how we don't really look inside our bodies um, until something bad happens. And that kind of struck with me as well. And again, we also talked about how there's a kind of a hierarchy of the organs. I remember, I think it was Kyle saying that we, we see loads of images of the heart, but we don't really usually talk about the pancreas so much. So I kind of wanted to do something a bit ce celebratory, I guess. Um, so yeah, so my own practice is interested, I'm interested in digital technology and um, the impact it has on our vision and agency. And I often remake digital images or digital material or reappropriate digital material to think more about the context and um, economies within which Im images circulate in. Um, so an example of that would have been um, reusing um, material from NASA space archives and, and creating a um, video work from that, uh, which I showed at favorite projects. And then I'm interested in kind of this idea that, yeah, digital material can be remediated and remade into, into many different forms. Um, so I was lucky enough that um, Daniel and um, David uh, brought me around the labs at Birmingham and I got to get a bit of an insight into and the live imaging techniques that they use. Um, I learned a bit more about um, the dyes that they use um, and calcium imaging, which takes advantage of these calcium indicators, fluorescent molecules that kind of respond. Um, and I, I love the images. Um, and so I, they actually gave me kind of a set of images that I could resample and rework with. Um, and some of them were um, 3D macro molecular data and some of them were small kind of um, uh, videos of cell activity and I was really drawn to them especially because I love working with images and I, I like to kind of re, re, um, reuse images. I was also really interested in Isabella's thesis um, and I was really drawn to what I saw as graphic patterns in her thesis and I was really driven to these plots and trying to take elements of these and create patterns um, from these. So um, I was also really interested in the idea that, um, sorry, a lot of the, the, the text in her thesis I found quite poetic. So like bursting rhythms, silent phases, rapid voltage, coupling currents, fast and slow bursts. And I thought they were almost like um, a rain, like kind of notation of a, of a graphic score, I guess. So I started taking some of these elements from Isabella's thesis and reworking them and reusing them as well as Daniel wrote me some code which translated um, cell activity into sounds. Um, and he also kind of gave me a run through of, of how he does that. And that was super interesting for me. So yeah, I guess learning how oscillations play such a huge role in cellular processes. Um, I kind of developed, uh, I, I developed all these kind of elements. And um, so this is one short test um, of that. Um, and then I developed like a series of prints and um, which again resampled some of the elements and um, repurposed some of the collage, some of them. Um, and I really wanted to create or what I would love to create is we had conversations about like creating this kind of sensory score. So I'd love to actually create objects. And if 
COVID hadn't happened, I very much wanted to do a kind of an environment that you would sit in. So you're almost like sitting in this um, world um, made out of pattern um, from all these images and data and sound that derives from the cell cellular processes. Um, but yeah, so I've tried to do something on in virtual space, but I started to like kind of look at printing and I'd love to like go further and create kind of um, 3D prints of some of these um, objects. So yeah, we just had interesting conversations. I also kind of talked to um, teachers and we talked about, well, how could we maybe create some teaching tools out of this material? Because we kind of talked about how it was interesting to learn from each other's processes and disciplines. So yeah, that's kind of going forward. And um, yeah, what I'd love to develop more. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you, Carol and Isabella. That again was fascinating and sort of hearing you say those words that I read a lot in scientific papers, it almost sounded, as you said, sort of poetic when phrased in the way you presented them. It doesn't sound quite as good when scientists <laughs> say it somehow, but that was absolutely fascinating. Um, so listen,